Hello and welcome to The Two Dyspraxics, episode 11. Um, I am Matthew Munson. And I'm Barbara Neal. And today we're going to be talking about personal grooming, specifically uh, looking at kind of things like shaving, uh, makeup. Not for me, obviously. Uh, Barbara's well, going to be talking about that side. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Otherwise, we've got an issue here. Um, but kind of shaving, personal grooming, uh, makeup, that kind of that kind of area. And mm. really, the difficulties that as dyspraxics, you know, with the fine motor skills involved in putting on makeup and presumably having shaved and things like oh, that as yeah. well. But um, how you can come unstuck, how it can be difficult, but also ways of overcoming some of the problems. And one thing for me is I, I wet shave, um, I put, put stuff on my face and. And, and use the old kind of blade. Cutthroat? Cutthroat, right. Well, not proper cutthroat, <laughs> but uh, that would be t- a step too far, I think, for me as a dyspraxic. Yeah, but risky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I use, I use a, 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 a gelette razor, I hesitated there because I wasn't sure whether I should do product placement, but a oh, well, bit of sponsorship, you never know. <laughs> um, so I use a gelette razor, um, and mostly it's fine because it gives me a closer shave, um, apparently, but it just, uh, for, for me, the difficulty is because my hand slips off and off and not have got a cut here or a cut here or I'll go into work sometimes and I'll have a cut of you know slashes on my face or I've just completely misaligned the blades slashes, in my face. Slashes that sounds incredibly but that does. <laughs> it's the best. Cool. It may be over over dramatising it slightly but I've got a cut of cut here and I've got to spend five minutes sat on the I'm sat on the sofa with a couple of bits of kind of you know tissue, tissue paper. paper trying to stem the bleeding. Um I, I did for a while go back to electric but uh, electric shaving with a razor but it just doesn't work for me quite as well so I I kind of take the pain a little bit with that. Really? <laughs> when, when you say it doesn't work for you, how do you mean exactly? Um, I don't know, I just I don't find, I, I find it actually, and I sound silly but I, I, I find it difficult to judge with an electric razor mm-hmm. when it's done to a sufficient, sufficient level. Whereas okay. if I got a, an electric, uh, uh, a manual razor, for want of a better word, yeah. um, I can feel against the contours of my skin when I'm properly shaved that makes sense because right. I because I kind of lack right. a perspective I can't tell with an electric razor yeah um, yeah that does make sense I understand that uh, I, I, I've been shaving for years and I, I couldn't do it probably on my face with electric um, well something that um, that reminds me of instantly is teeth <coughs> brushing um, because um, I found ages ago that when I stayed at my mum's place I always had sore gums and I couldn't work out why you know I thought there has to be some kind of correlation here because it's only when I stay at my mum's you know when I'm at home it's okay and it's because I had an electric toothbrush at home and an ordinary toothbrush at my mum's so I couldn't gauge how much pressure yeah to use and I was making my gums sore so the um, advice I would give give really to combat that particular problem is to get an electric toothbrush but nowadays I've noticed that they have this sort of convoluted way of letting you know um, when you're applying too much pressure because a little light comes on so that means that you have to look in the mirror while you're brushing your teeth notice when the light comes on and that doesn't really help whereas mine is pressure sensitive so if I apply too much pressure then the toothbrush automatically switches off and then on again when I sort of lessen the amount of pressure so idea. so that works really well but whether you can still get them like that or not I don't know but um, I was wondering if it might be something that we could do as a group as a pressure group Sorry, but, oh, boom, boom. <laughs> if um, if there are any other dyspraxics who really feel that um, if they if you find it very difficult to get one of these pressure sensitive toothbrushes that doesn't rely on a light coming on and you're looking in the mirror and trying to work it out um, if you feel that you would like one like the one I use, which I have had for a few years now, then perhaps we could put some pressure on some of the manufacturers or at least contact the manufacturers and say, look, this is a particular difficulty that we dyspraxics have. Um, how about coming up with a toothbrush that we can use that makes life easier for us? I think that's a good idea, actually. It's certainly, certainly worth exploring. Mm-hmm. If you do have any issues about that, put it on the link uh, underneath the bar page thing, whatever it's called, uh, and, and perhaps we can set some discussions about that that could be an interesting yeah, project yeah it us. really does help I mean I would be completely messed up without my toothbrush it's interesting actually because I, 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 I got a manual toothbrush still okay. have habit more than anything and I think for me I, I, I use it just because that's what I've always used and sometimes if I'm kind of brushing brush teeth in the morning and I kind of I go off, off into my own little world which I do sometimes I'm thinking have I brought, how much am I I kind of forget I have to go over it again to make sure that I brush the whole thing and Right. And not not pre- uh, brushed it properly, and after I've to sometimes do it twice to make sure I've done it as I should do it, you know, to to protect my teeth. So actually, yeah, 
Perhaps the occasional little beep might bring me back to reality sometimes as well. well it, it doesn't beep or anything like that, my toothbrush. Oh, okay. It's just um, if I apply too much pressure, then it just oh, it switches, switches off. off. Yeah. Oh, okay. But then comes back on again when I'm applying the right amount of pressure. So it's really, really handy. So I don't really have to think about it. Mm. You know, it just um, does the job for me, which is brilliant. Something else that I think I'll have to, well, I will have to defer to you on, Papa. Um, makeup. Um, something I makeup. can talk yes, about. Yes, I, I have to be honest, I very rarely wear makeup, and there's a good reason for that because. She's gorgeous um, enough as it is. That's exactly it. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll slip you that far. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> but, um, no, I remember many years ago when there was a friend and I who also doesn't wear makeup very often, and um, we came to the conclusion that, how did it go? If you usually wear makeup on the few occasions that you don't you look awful whereas if you usually don't on the few occasions that you do you look fantastic so we <laughs> thought it's a nice lazy way of going about it we quite like that one but um no i think the main reason i don't use makeup is um because i am gorgeous enough without it as very you true. so rightly very said very true by the way that way and um but because <laughs> but because <laughs> As a dyspraxic, it's quite, you know, putting on mascara is a very intricate thing to do. So on the few occasions I do, then I invariably get smudges and I have to try and undo damage and things like that, you know, where I've made a mess of it. But um, there are some ways around this that can help. And particularly in the case of mascara, it's possible to have your eyelashes tinted, dyed, and it lasts for up to six weeks. Honestly, I'm not joking. I didn't know that was existed. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I've been it's something I've indulged in on and off for the past oh we see since the seventies, long, long time. Very long time. So if there's something coming up, you know, some kind of event or whatever, then um I do occasionally now just um, go along and get my go along to a beautician's, get my eyelashes tinted. And uh, so it looks as though you've got mascara on, you don't have to bother about it. It lasts for up to six weeks, no effort whatsoever. And it looks as though you've made a really good job of it. Too, so. <laughs> <laughs> so Without the hassle of having to do it yourself, exactly. which is the stress yeah. of it. Yeah, that's a good exactly. point. Exactly, so that's a helpful way around it. And um, yeah, that's basically it, really. I mean, I think um, other makeup, you know, it is tricky because you've got the left and right coordination thing going on and so you know, to get something that looks fairly symmetrical I mean our faces aren't truly symmetrical anyway no. but, but it's quite a tall order but that's one shortcut that does help actually something else I just want not about makeup but something else that's just occurred to me as you were talking is earlier on say Barbara Mason freaked me out a little bit um, I, I wear glasses um, as, <laughs> as you can rightly see and um, the, the reason that I wear glasses rather than contact lenses, lenses in that um, I can't get my, like my finger close to my eye, I can't imagine putting things into my eye. Um, and, and Barbara, I'm not, I'm not, I hope I'm not making some sort of code here by revealing that Barbara wears contact lenses. Well, I've got glasses um, on in some of the early well, videos. Actually, so no. fair point. So, yeah, you have to, no. It's episode 11, Barbara. I forget what we've done in the first couple, I think. Yeah, um, and so, I don't say Barbara arrived with her glasses on and she changed, changed into her contact lenses and I, I just kind of went a bit bananas, a bit, a bit freaked out by it. Um, I think partly it's because I have this terror because I've got such awful coordination of my fingers. The thought of trying to put my finger into my eye to get this straight, and, but yeah, you can do it though. I can, yes. And that's <coughs> excuse me, that's years and years of practice because I first had contact lenses in 1980. So how long ago is that now? 33 long years. Long time, very long time. So do you know and I, I have tell got you used that. to it. You yeah. before I was born, that was. Was it? Yeah. <gasps> The year before you were born, so I've been I've been using contact lenses for a year longer than Matthew's been walking this earth. Well, wow, stumbling a, this earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, that's quite an incredible that's quite scary. Yeah. yeah, but um, now I think the reason for that, and I have to have to cast my mind back to when I first had contact lenses, and and I was being fitted for them, and that was pretty horrible because the optician's finger was. <laughs> coming towards my face and I was going like this you know I was sort of leaning back so he kind of stopped and pushed my head back to the back of the the um, headrest on the seat so I couldn't go any further and then it was just <laughs> but that was horrible <laughs> I didn't like that at Aww. all I didn't like it but um the way I got used to it I think it's partly because um I mean you know the the act of sort of putting a lens into my eye means I have to get the pressure right because yeah, it hurts if <laughs> you don't if you push too hard but the way I've found over that is to just put lots of the fluid into the lens and then just get close enough to my eye and it kind of goes <laughs> onto it anyway you know the suction of the so I do sort of sort of too too little of that 
rather than too much, if that makes sense. Yeah, because there's so much fluid there that it's the contact of the fluid with the lens that makes it kind of like leap onto my eye. Uh, I just think I think oh, it does freak me out a bit, but um, I'll be good. Actually, I've stayed during Barbara's description of that earlier. Yeah, I, I, I kind of ran off. That, as soon as Barbara started changing her contact lens, I was out of the room. I had to go somewhere else. Um, but I think I think I just find it interesting that we both got to spark to you, and yet you kind of overcome that. And I just I can't seem to get my head round. It's perhaps a phobia as well, but. Um, but it, it could be, but um, yeah, I think it's the same old story really that we have so many things that we would like to be able to do or we need to be able to do, and we just prioritise. Yeah. And we just yeah, you know, whatever we feel we can get over, we get over so it. Because that's felt more important to you at the time than it's probably felt <coughs> to me. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, well, I'm extremely short-sighted. My focal length is about that, you know, which is what, three or four inches in front of my face, you know. So I hate wearing glasses. I really do. And um, how many things I'm holding up? Um, I'm not going there, Matthew, because oh. as you know, <laughs> that's not the sort of thing that we want to treat no, our that's viewers to. <laughs> that's and peace, peace to you as well. Peace, yeah. As well. Um, I've completely lost my Yeah, point. sorry, I distracted you there. Sorry, that's my fault. Um, yes, purposes. that's right. Yeah, because I had um, glasses which are like Coke bottle bottoms, yeah, so they're not at all flattering, and uh, so I've never liked wearing those. But um, as my son would testify, we been out today and it's it's a cloudy day but we've had quite a lot of sunshine as well i'm just looking out the window now and it's um it's, it's quite still, pleasant now still, actually. It's, tight, it's nice. 20 past eight on the longest day of the year we are yeah. recording to the 21st of Jan, uh, january june june, june. Yeah. and it's yeah it's still quite light and, and actually I, I find that easier on my, on my eyes i find that easier yeah it's um, lovely because i've off the point slightly but hey. yeah you have you have a bit but i haven't forgotten where i got to so that's <laughs> probably <laughs> a first but um, the sun was disappearing behind the clouds and coming out again. And, and so the sun was going in and out like crazy. And so because I didn't have my contact lenses in, because it's okay when I've got my lenses in, I can just put my sunglasses on. But um, I've got prescription sunglasses as well. So when I'm wearing my ordinary glasses, my eyes are very sensitive, actually. And I've heard that that's a um, symptom of dyspraxia. I don't know how true that is. It would be what interesting. sensitive eyes? That. Yeah. It's not something that bothers you particularly I, much. I, I, know in, I know in kind of, cause I, I can't really wear uh, sunglasses because I've got these are prescription lenses. And I'm, I'm not, I refuse to pay out for a pair of separate. Right. That, so I, I do. Skin flint. <laughs> I, it's true, I am. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm very tired with money, but that's, just, that's another conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I find it hard. I do squint a lot in sunshine. I, I do squint a hell of a lot. But I just always assume that was just because I don't have. Sunglasses well, I can use. I don't know. Sorry, I mean, I've got blue eyes, and some people say, well, it's if you have blue eyes, you're very sensitive to bright light. And um, but I, have, yeah, it's part of the hypersensitivity thing as well. I think. Yeah, which we talked about in a in a indeed in a previous, previous well. yeah yeah. But um, previous because episode, actually. <laughs> absolutely, but because I um, have my glasses on today, my ordinary glasses, and I can't see a thing without them, um, so I couldn't just wear ordinary um, sunglasses, obviously. But I've got prescription glasses prescription sunglasses I should say and so poor Richard he was he was the one carrying the bag bless him and um, with the, the sandwiches and things in. the reason we're looking over is to get, should we have a guest we're, we're not, we are going to comment him but which is actually in the room at the moment yeah he is here but he's too shy to, he, he's uh, refused to join in the um I can't say I blame him actually no. he'd want to associate with us oh god no have to. well he's, he's not but related to he's only related to you he's uh, you know, I'm all right with him yeah yeah that's true <laughs> no, I'm, joking. I'm joking I'm joking but um no, and I, I can still remember the point of what I was saying. Oh, really. Yeah, we, we, we are diverging a little bit, but yeah, that's fine. But uh, Richard was carrying the bag, so he got my um, prescription sunglasses in its case, in his bag, in the rucksack. So I think it was every, was it every two minutes were you complaining about Rich? Yeah, when he said, oh, Mum, He's every two minutes, yeah, could you pass me my sunglasses? Thank you. Okay. Mum, do you really have to? And so I was, well, yeah, I'm afraid I do, you know, because um, I can't see. When um, you know, I can't see without my glasses, so I have to have the sunglasses. But then, you know, we go inside a shop or something like that, and it's too dark, so I have to yeah. change them back again. So, That's selfish, well, it's a pain. That's it's such a pain. So, contact lenses are definitely. That was a very, yeah. very, very long way around saying that. Um, to me, it was important <laughs> to wear contact lenses and to master yeah. that bit of. Um, it's, it's never important to wear contact. No. no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's horrible. That's horrible. See what you have to put up with, ladies and gentlemen. I'm to work with with her tormenting me like this. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so, that's right, us. so is there anything else that we need to say about personal grooming? We covered shaving, makeup, mm-hmm. uh, contact, drug, lenses, contact lenses, washing teeth. washing teeth. Those are the main areas, really, aren't and we? And hair combing is a. Oh, hair yeah, combing. We, we have touched on that before when we were talking about hypersensitivity because mm-hmm. that's quite a difficult one. That's um, something that um, certainly I know one of my other sons, I've got a whole collection of them, <laughs> but one of my other sons who is also dyspraxic has had a problem <laughs> with um, when he was little, I used to comb his hair and he found it very, very uncomfortable. So that's another thing which can be a... So I suppose, Someone, yes, lots of excitement outside my someone, window. Someone's put a contact lens in wrong. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, that can be a bit tricky. If, you, if your eyes dry up and it's difficult oh. to get them... Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that just to wind you up. It's just a, an added bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was about to say we're like um, we're like Fern and Phil on the on the TV, but it's not because she's never evil to him. No, she isn't. That's very true. I'll give you that one. <laughs> on but, that note, um, yeah, I think um, if if you can think of anything else as well that that we haven't covered as far as personal grooming is concerned. Um, then please let us know. Ooh, down there. Please interact. We love we, interaction. We, we, we love people talking to us. We love yeah. people talking to us. Yeah, we really do. So, so please, please get in contact because we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and we'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.